Thank you, Admiral Hagari. As our forces continue their thorough operations against Hamas in Gaza, there's something worth acknowledging. Hamas's use of civilians as human shields forces the IDF to fight under circumstances that few militaries, if any, have faced in the history of modern urban warfare. We are defending ourselves from Hamas, a savage enemy that intentionally blends itself within the civilian population in Gaza and is hiding our hostages among them too. So while we fulfill our, press our pressing mission of pursuing Hamas terrorists with force, we do so while operating with caution and care to minimize harm to the civilians that Hamas is hiding behind, all while urgently looking for our hostages being held in Hamas captivity in those same areas. The complexity posed by such a mission was evident on Friday, December 15th, when our soldiers found themselves in the devastating situation of mistakenly shooting the very hostages they were meant to save. The IDF Chief of the General Staff, Lieutenant General Hertz Levy, said that shooting those, waving a white flag, trying to surrender, is against the rules of engagement, hostages and civilians alike. We cannot lose sight of how we got here, who put us in this situation in the first place. Hamas seeks to blur the very lines that humanity dictates, the lines that distinguish between terrorists and the civilians that should be protected. It's sometimes difficult to comprehend, difficult to fully fathom the lengths at which Hamas is willing to go in order to kill Israelis. They will use any and every tool at their disposal, whether it is a hospital, a mosque, a child's bedroom, or even their own civilians. This is Hamas. This is who we're dealing with. And at the same time, Hamas knows who they're dealing with. They know very well that the IDF is committed to international law and values. So Hamas goes to great lengths to use this against us. Hamas is weaponizing international law. Hamas is using our humanity to wage war. Here are just a few examples from the last few days alone. Mid days before the tragic incident in which our hostages were mistakenly shot, Hamas tried to lure IDF soldiers into a trap. They placed dolls in baby clothes in an alleyway next to children's school bags full of explosives while playing recordings of the words, save me, in Hebrew. Hamas hoped to use our humanity against us, but our soldiers, our soldiers fold the ambush before they could. Here's another example from the last week, an example that we documented and distributed to the world. When our troops entered the Kamal Adwan hospital after dozens of Hamas terrorists surrendered from inside, IDF forces discovered that Hamas had been using incubators incubators to hide weapons and explosives. They literally turned the very machines that were supposed to sustain life into an instrument for death. Here's another example from the last week, an example that we documented and distributed, distributed to the world. Just yesterday, the IDF exposed a massive tunnel, at least four kilometers long and wide enough to drive a car through. Tunnels in Gaza are not new. But this one is notable, not just for its sheer size, but because of its location. Hamas dug this attack tunnel just 400 meters from the Erez humanitarian crossing, a crossing that had been, bu been built to benefit the people of Gaza, where Gazans used to cross into Israel to work, receive medical treatment, or visit family. The Erez humanitarian crossing was a source of prosperity and hope until the horrific massacre of October 7th, when Hamas destroyed it and killed and kidnapped some of the very people who were stationed there to provide humanitarian aid and assistance to Gazans. The same day we exposed Hamas's massive attack tunnel next to the humanitarian crossing that Hamas destroyed, Israel reopened another major crossing with Gaza, the Kerem Shalom crossing, in order to facilitate the entry of more aid to the people of Gaza because our war is against Hamas, not against the people of Gaza. Our intent is to defeat Hamas and secure the release of our hostages. Hamas, Hamas's intent is the tragic suffering of civilians in Gaza and Israel in this war that Hamas started. Indeed, there are vast challenges when fighting an enemy like Hamas. 
Within these excruciatingly complex circumstances, we do our best to conduct our operations as carefully and as professionally as possible. And while our, pro our policies and procedures are in line with the law and our values, we are aware that when fighting on such a scale, there may be deviations that require further examination. The IDF has a robust system for doing so, and it starts with the IDF's general staff's fact-finding and assessment mechanism. The mechanism is, is independent from the forces involved in the fighting and has already started working on impartial examinations. The findings of this mechanism serve the relevant bodies when deciding the necessary steps that are required per case. When misconduct is, ident is identified, the IDF will take action. It also serves our lessons learned process and its recommendations help mitigate the risk of exceptional incidents occurring in the future. Our goal remains the same, to dismantle Hamas and secure the release of our hostages. While this mission is urgent, we will continue to fulfill it with care and with a commitment to the sanctity of life, both Israeli and Palestinian. Thank you.